With our friends on the Denton County Extension, Sarah has made her way in. Good how morning. You, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I haven't seen you since just before the holidays, I believe. I know, yeah, long time. But here we are almost in March. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how that happened already. you got to get out of the house a little bit more. A little bit. Now, now, the weather's nowadays, nice. Oh, the weather yesterday should have been out of the house. Mm-hmm. Everybody should it was have been beautiful. out of the house. Beautiful day. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but i uh, got some things going on. We've got a couple of uh, classes and, and online things happening and right. other stuff going on. So I guess... We're going to leave it to you. And I know we have something about food in Missouri, about how yeah. to get that on. And it's a, that sounds like a very interesting four-part series, doesn't right, it? Right, four-part series. So this is for producer, farmers, producers, mm-hmm. anybody that wants to sell a product directly to consumers. So whether that's at a farmer's market, farm stand on your farm, you know, you're thinking about selling at a local store. Um, so this is all the, like, rules and regulations, permits you might need to do that safely and properly um and what's nice about this is we're partnering with all of the um agencies so department of agriculture department of health and senior services that regulate all of those different products and so you get a chance to hear directly from them um you know what's what's happening this year what to expect um you know you can ask questions but um so the first one in the series is kind of an overview it's a program with department of ag called missouri grown Okay. which is a really good marketing program. They help with labeling if you want to use the Missouri Grown label on your product. Um, and then we're also going to review our extension resources for people in the food system, which is everybody, right? Farm to table, we're all in the food system. But um, we're kind of focusing this A lot more than time. you think, right? A lot more, yeah. right? So, um, but this series is really focusing on those um, kind of that those folks that grow and produce um, the processing. So if you make a product, um, if you're making applesauce or baked goods, selling meat or poultry, all of that kind of stuff. Um, this is something you'd want to check out. Okay. And it's a great it's a great source because <laughs> farmer's market's not that far away from right. opening up, and you can become a part of the farmer's market, and especially if you learn all the ins and outs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know how to package. You know how to different, do different things, display, and you know what's required of you. And I think that's always been the question. Well, how, what, how do, what do I do when I want to go to the farmer's market? Well, there are certain state requirements. There are. And, you know, really they're not it, – it's not something to be daunted by. Right. Like they're, they're just there to help keep everybody safe. And, you know, as a producer, that's what you'd want is to make sure that your product is safe. Sure. Um, so, you know, really it's – they'll be covering things about, like, the scales that you might want to use. If you're selling fruit and veggies right. at the farmer's market, what kind of scale and how to package or weigh it. Um, what kind of labels if you're making baked goods. So, yeah, it'll be a really good, you know, question and answer time to um, hear what – you know what to do and how to get connected. If you need, mm-hmm. if you're going to sell eggs, there's an egg license. It's only five dollars. It's not hard to get, but you know, kind of just the how to. Yeah. Um, so that series, yeah, it's going to be. You know, right now we're limited. We can't do much in person. So this one's virtual, which mm-hmm. um, you know, then you could do it from home or sitting on your couch. <laughs> there's some benefits. <laughs> sitting right? at your table or your yep. office, sitting out in the barn. If you want. That could be, yeah. Um, so it's going to be Tuesdays. Um, the four Tuesday, four of the five Tuesdays in March right. from 3.30 starting to 5.30, Tuesday, starting next fact, Tuesday. Right. So time to get um, signed up. It's $15 a session. So if you're, like, say, only doing meat, you can sign up just for that session. But if you're interested in all four, it's $40 for the whole series. So there's a um, registration link online, um, or you can call our office, and we'll help you get set up to register. Mm-hmm. So. Is it Lori Bosch who's be- Birch, Lori Birch. Oh, yep, Leslie yeah. Birch. Mm-hmm. Lacey. Yep. Yeah, okay. yep. yeah, she's teaching, and she's got a uh, – we'll have that story in your world today here yeah. uh, tomorrow. Great, thanks. But uh, we'll put that back out because it's getting right here on time. It's mm-hmm. time to do it now. And you can you can send her an email as well if you have right. any questions or mm-hmm. give her a call. Um, this is a – this series, though, is something – I think when we, we talk about – Oh, food products. I think I think a lot of people have that misconception. Like you say, it's not hard to get, but who to get it from? Mm-hmm. What steps do you need to take? What kind of license? If you need a license, what kind of license do you have to have? These little questions, you know, there's not a lot of immediate answers out there. I mean, you, you can't just call anybody and say, hey, how do I get this license? Because, okay, mm-hmm. say I'm selling eggs and you're selling fruit. It's not the same Right. It's not the same people. You know, and not to make it tricky, but each county is a little different, too. Right. In Missouri, it's a home rule state. Kind of like so, fence laws. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but so, you know, um, we always you can always call our office if you have questions about that. Or um, we also refer to the health department for whatever mm-hmm. county you want to sell in. So, um, like, for example, uh, Phelps County has a little bit stricter code than Dent County does. So, you know, if you want to sell the Rolla Farmer's Market, you might want to check out um, and t- okay. talk to them. But, um, yeah, you can always stop by our office. And, you know, food systems... 
is is really important. It's part of, you know, food is one of those fundamental things sure. we need in our community, but it also supports the economy, right? We want um, strong local farms and food businesses. We need the transportation and the processing companies. We need um, grocery stores or places to buy food. You know, right? So it's the whole system of getting it. And we're there's a lot of pieces and steps in that, but um, that's where Extension is involved because it's important about supporting the economy and helping businesses be successful. Plus, everybody being have access to healthy food, the food choices say, and all of that. So That's the key ingredient, <laughs> mm-hmm. access to healthy and homegrown food, which has more nutrients than your store-bought food at any time. But let's let's go back one step. We kind of mm-hmm. talked about the farmer's market. We touched on it as saying it's not that far away. Farmer's Market in Den County uh, is a huge benefit to this county, and it's behind the uh, the, the SACPA office with, and right mm-hmm. next to the ONCRC. And if you are interested in the farmer's market, this is a good time to start thinking about it, this right? This is, yeah. I think they usually schedule their market meeting, uh, you know, March sometime. Usually in March, right. And um, so you can call the SACPA office, or um, I think Tom Haynes might be one of the managers there. Um, but we can help get connected if you need you know, some information on who to connect with there, too. But, um, yeah, the farmer's markets are really important. Um, they're not, I mean, not just about the farm businesses, mm-hmm. but they're a social interaction. Right. Got a little curl ta- curtailed this past year, but, you know, they still made it work um, safely. Right. And then it's a really good part of our culture, right? You know, right. I mean, getting fresh, healthy food from the farm, homegrown, you know, knowing your farmer. Right. That's a really important part of our rural communities. Right. So. And I've seen you and David there, and, of course, you have fresh, fresh vegetables, breads uh some and when you get close to mother's day a lot of times there's plants you have a lot of different things that are there that people may not say well i didn't know that would be there that's why you go yeah. and it's not always the same people every week because mm-hmm. some people have a nice run of crops and then they don't have as much that next week so they're not there right uh somebody else can be there uh, i know tom haynes has brought honey in the past when he's mm-hmm. had an abundance uh, extra you know mm-hmm. sometimes he doesn't sometimes he does but if he is and he might have some honey there so honey products are yeah. there available. all kinds all, of stuff all kinds of different things so don't just assume it's just a bunch of tomatoes and eggs and yeah that's we have it. a really nice diverse market yeah, and we um you know we have the whole range some from people that are hobby farmers to um you know full-time production you know um there's a there's some farmers doing eggs there's um Actually, yogurt, mm-hmm. butter, all kinds of cool stuff. So, yeah, it's a neat place to find different stuff and see what people are producing here. So. It, and uh, I was out there one time, and I remember somebody had uh, natural made soap mm-hmm. at, at yeah. the farmer's market. So right. it's not always just a food item either. So as I mentioned, mm-hmm. sometimes flowers or, or floral right. plants that are there that they've grown at home and, and a lot of different things. So farmer's market, be looking for it. That usually opens up at the end of March, I think, on the first of April. May, beginning of May, I think, yeah. usually. Oh, first okay. weekend of May. Well, well, I'm thinking of the meeting. I think I'm thinking oh, the of meeting, meeting, yes. Yeah, usually I'm March or April. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah. didn't say Sorry. that very well. Uh, it opens up meeting first. You need to really address that. And then if you want to be a part of the farmer's market, again, as Sarah mentioned, uh, get a hold of SACPA. Or you can call Tom Haynes, and we'll give his number out here a little bit yeah. if, uh, if you don't have it. So very good. Uh, let's talk a, a little bit uh, about how COVID has affected the extension. Right. Obviously, you know, we already talked about the online courses and mm-hmm. stuff, uh, but there's a, it's starting to relax a little bit. Not yet. Totally. Not yet. Not we're yet. Still, totally. Right. But, um, you know, so just like everybody, we were shut down a little bit last spring, mm-hmm. but we've been open again since then. So our office is still open eight to four thirty Monday through Friday. Um, you can't come in the office the way you used to, but, um, you know, we're, Right there, we can help you out and get you what you need. Um, We do a lot more via phone calls, Zoom meetings. And, you know, despite the downsides of that, I know it can be hard sometimes and there's Internet access issues, but um, it's actually opened up a lot of opportunities for us in Extension Mm -hmm. to better serve the communities. Because, you know, it used to be if we wanted to bring a specialist or someone on a specific topic who was in Kansas City, we had to pay for that travel and mileage down here. And sometimes right. it was really limited by time, right? That's a bigger commitment. But now we can access those speakers virtually. And I think even once we go back to more in-person courses, um, we'll still be able to do that now. We, mm-hmm. we figured out how to do it, right? To have a speaker right. zoom in, right. even and if we have a group in the room. You a big so. screen and have, <clears throat> have that speaker there. Right. So, you know, it's, it has, it's been hard, no doubt, but there's been some positive things about it. We've been able to um, work in teams better because we're doing it virtually. And so I think that's really opened up a lot more that we can provide to the communities than we could before when it was only 
right. always in person. So. But the services are still there. The soil test, the hay test, all that stuff is still there. Matter of fact, soil test, uh, when we had a discussion about soil test here back in December, how important it really is to get those now. Actually, well, probably not right now. It's kind of wet. But you might want to wait a few days, dry out for a little bit. And then get that soil test, but you got to take a number of samples. I think people think they're going to take one big scoop and that's it and send it off, and that's not going to be enough. That's just not enough information for them to give you a, a true sample and a true idea of what your, your soil needs. Mm hmm. Right. So, I mean, um, if you haven't done it before, give us a call or come by the office and we can give you an instruction sheet. But yeah, you want to kind of get a sample from around your. If it's your garden or your lawn or pasture, um, so we kind of have some tips on how to do that and get the right. So you're so you're getting a better picture, not just one spot where you might have, you know. I think a lot of people have been misconception when my yard is dirt. Dirt is dirt, right? No, it's yeah. not. Right. So you can find out. You know, it saves money. That's yeah. a big part of it because if you don't have to just go buy a, a ton of fertilizer, if you know the right amounts, or maybe there is a spot or section that needs more. Um, it, it, it's a cost savings mm -hmm. and, um, you know, time and all of that too, that you wouldn't have to put something on if you don't need it at all. So, exactly. um, helps with environmental issues too, to not be overloading the yeah. soil. So. Very, very good stuff. So check that out again. Those, those tests and everything are, they're still all available. You can yep. get them done. Uh, also I wanted to, to uh, bring out with the extension and, and, and a lot of different things that have gone on that we know that a little bit different than we have the community garden now last mm -hmm. year really struggled obviously because of social distancing and yep. oh everything was, else you know nobody wanted to be anywhere mm -hmm. um and it was just hard to get into any kind of rhythm wasn't it right so yeah last tell, year tell was, us a little bit about the community garden and yeah basically going, a year off year. last year yeah um, which is uh, what's too bad because a lot of people right being home, there was a lot more interest in gardening and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people did that. So at they home. did it at home, did it at home. So that was good. Um, but, uh, Charlie Grimm, who's a master naturalist, um, from Dent County and Tom Haynes are going to, um, kind of redo the garden this year. So, um, there's going to be a kind of cleanup day, um, in a couple weeks. And what we're going to do is kind of redo all the beds and instead of having there'll be a lot of more options so not just the there were um four foot by 14 before but there'll right. be some smaller ones there'll be some that are bigger if you want a little bit bigger spot and um they've they're really gonna they have some plans so um you know if you've not gardened before and want to have a spot to garden and some assistance um they're getting ready it'll all be still social distance sure. and, you know small groups um but it's a great place to get out there and i think we're really gonna get it cleaned up and start fresh this year right. um so yeah and as we continue to move forward, obviously, um, hopefully with vaccinations and things of that nature, maybe we can mm -hmm. relax a little bit more of those rules as time goes on. But right now, you still have to abide by it. And it will be that way for the next it at least two or three months, yeah, at least. For sure. So I want to keep that, uh, keep that in mind. But the community garden will be back open. It will. So if you're interested, I mean, you can always call our office. Mm -hmm. um, or you can call Charlie Grimm at 368-9902, and he's going to be kind of taking some um, you know, sign-ups and an answering questions and looking for volunteers. Um, yeah, they have some new ideas this year, so I think it'll be something different. And, um, you know, it's it's a really great resource. Um, we've had so much support for that garden, so it's a really neat neat place to get out and meet people and and grow some good food. It, it's, a, it's a great, it's a really great place. If you've never been out there, I highly recommend it. It's uh, easy to get to, and it's mm -hmm. very, very visible. So, uh, feel free to ask about it and just call 7293196 if, if you can't get a hold of Charlie and mm -hmm. just let them know you're interested. And somehow they'll get the communication. Charlie, he can give you a call. Yep. And that might make it easier because never know. Charlie that's sometimes true. outside having call, a good time. That's <laughs> right. Call our office and we'll get you connected and get you um, registered very, out there. So good. it's open for anybody. Um, anybody's Absolutely. welcome to come out and garden and grow there. So, um, yep, the more the merrier. Absolutely. And make it a family affair because, you know, I know when I was growing up, you know, dad built his garden. Of course, dad dug the garden and then the boys, we raked it, hoed it, weeded it, <laughs> picked everything out of it, you know, but dad dug the garden. And when dad dug the garden, that was, as soon as he got the shovels out, you knew it was time, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't a huge garden, but it was still a garden, but it, it gives you that responsibility. You still have to go take care of the plants, you got to water them, got to weed them, check them, make sure things are good. And then when the when your vegetables, or in some cases fruit, if you call it tomatoes, fruit, <laughs> which they are, uh, when they're ready and ripe, you want to be there to get them. You don't want to have that food deteriorate by forgetting 
Right. So it's a good responsibility tool for children uh, to learn that, hey, you could not only grow great food, that you can now survive on your own mm -hmm. by growing food, but it also gives them a responsibility of taking care of these plants. Right. So talking about kids out in the garden, there's a new partnership that's going to start up this spring. How between, did I segue into that? Line? I, you knew, like, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, so there's a new program with 4-H and our youth nutrition program, I'm sorry, nutrition program um, that's called 4-H SNAC, which stands for Student Nutrition Advisory Council. And what's, that, what's going to happen there is it'll be like a 4-H project okay. um, that kids can sign up for. And, um, and you don't have to, I'm pretty sure, you don't have to be in 4-H yet. You can sign up kind of as a special project. But the idea there is for, it's for like middle school, junior high, I think, age, maybe high school, a little bit older kids. And the kids will, um, you know, work at the garden a little bit, but learn about um, health and food access in, the, in our community and then come up with their own community project so kind of that there advocacy yeah. like finding a problem and figuring out how to help solve it and so it'll be a neat project this spring and put um, Amy our new 4-H person mm -hmm. she and um, Stephanie Wofford our nutrition program associate are going to partner on that to get that up and running so again another um, there'll be a lot of things happening out there the garden 4-H is welcome um, there's a lot of other student groups you know if you have a student that's thinking about their SAE for FFA or wants to just do a you know, homeschool project. There's all kinds of opportunities. So, so and I know uh, I haven't met Amy yet, but I understand, you know, with the 4-H and stuff going on, with these social distancing requirements, it's mm -hmm. been a little bit tough on 4-H in it the is. last year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our 4-H groups here are fantastic, but still difficult is difficult when you can't mm -hmm. get together. But, you know, she's trying to make sure that everybody's getting that same kind of education and opportunity with 4-H as they had before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's... Again, like it's been hard. Some of the groups have still been able to meet and do some things um, with you know, masks and distancing and all of that. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, there's been new, if you're on Facebook, there's a, I think, daily or weekly thing called um, Quarantine, but it's like a, a 4-H activity that they're doing virtually. There's somebody that's teaching something, a skill or, you know, lesson. So there's all kinds of new opportunities we had to be creative, right, mm -hmm. this past oh, yeah. year. Everybody did. And so um, it kind of gave some new opportunities. So there's a lot of ways that, um, you know, to some some places have done packets and um, activity packets. Um, so, yeah, all kinds of activities. So, But if you have questions about 4-H, and I know a lot of people kind of forgot, you know, uh, you know everybody knew Linda when, when Linda, mm -hmm. you know, was retiring and then COVID hit. I mean, it was just all at one time. And I think people kind of thought everything kind of went dormant. It didn't really go dormant, but you just didn't hear about it because everything was COVID-19 and COVID-19. Yep. So yeah. uh, a lot of different things, but you can contact the office and talk with Amy and mm -hmm. she can get you right up to date on what's going on with the 4-H. Yeah, we're glad to have Amy. She started in November mm -hmm. and she set the ground running. So um, yeah. So <laughs> Still it's running, right? <laughs> There's a lot to take in, but yeah, she's oh, doing yeah. great. So we'll get her in here to meet you soon. She, she's got some big shoes to fill too, mm -hmm. you know, and which is so it's always good. It makes it a challenge, right? right? <laughs> Very good. Right. Uh, one of the things that, that I want to remind people of is the extension working with the Missouri s &T. You guys work really good with the business specialists over there, and they offer a number of different uh, workshops right. that are f they're free, right? Mm -hmm. And when those workshops, when they're free, that's free. And they can help you with your business, and those are available all the time, aren't they? Right. There's, there's online ones right now all the time. Um, you can also call and um, meet one-on-one, -on -one, um, mm -hmm. either by Zoom, by Zoom or if they're doing in person yet, um, but with a counselor to do some business, they'll help you with business planning, thinking about financing, some of those steps that, are, you know, it's, it can be kind of tricky to start a business. Again, kind of like the farmer's exactly, market stuff, right. all the things you need to figure out. But those counselors are great. Um, if you read the Salem News yesterday, we had um, Karen Leatherman, our small business development counselor, wrote um, our monthly column. We have a new column starting in the newspaper. So take a look at that because that talks about a lot of the programs and what they offer. And we do have a great relationship with ms &T. And, you know, um, I just always try to remind people, Extension, University of Missouri Extension, is also tied to the whole UM system. So right. we're connected to that entire um set of schools. So University of Missouri, St. Louis, Kansas City, ms &T. And so part of our role is to help be that connection point and local advocate to the university. So if there's something that's happening here that we can connect to a resource at one of those universities, that's um, part of what our job is with Extension is to be the connection point. So a lot of resources to, to look at and use. 
There is. There's a lot of different things that are available to you. So, uh, and I know our Chamber of Commerce has helped out with some of those business workshops mm -hmm. and, and getting them out there. So if you have any questions about some of those, if you hear about it or maybe you don't get all the information, you can call the Chamber or you can call 729-3196 and the extension can keep mm -hmm. you up to date. Or you can actually go online. A lot of those are easy to find under events. Right. Just click on, on the website. You want to give that website? I'm, I'm kind I of do. Your sure. <laughs> Extension dot Missouri. Spell it all out. Dot edu. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so you can just um, if there's a specific thing we've talked about mm -hmm. or that uh, issue that you're interested in, type it in the search bar. That's our easiest way. Or click that event thing, and you can just scroll through scroll the through. list. And and again, now half the stuff you can. It doesn't matter where you are. You can um, sign up and and access it no matter where you are all in right. the state. So um, so yeah, that's a great resource. We also have a Facebook page. And we try to post, um, you know, programs and services there. And then um, we've also started doing a biweekly email newsletter that's some highlights of programs that are coming up. So if you're interested in that, you know, we're really trying to, we always hear that we're a good kept secret. So we're trying some new marketing this year to try to get the word out, make sure people know that we're here. And if you have questions or things that we might be able to help with, with educational resources or services, let us know. Okay. Very good. Okay. Anything else? Um, let's see. I just wanted to mention, oh, I think I got almost all of it. We just started a new council, mm -hmm. elected a new council. And, um, Every January? Yep. The January is the election. And then they just took office at our meeting Monday night. And so they starting swear. March, they, we, we unofficially <laughs> swore them in over Zoom, right? <laughs> we had to make do this year yeah, a little bit, right? We're, we're hoping by the summer we might be able to have our sort of formal event again, but, um, yeah, so we have a great council, um, and those are, again, our, like, advocates in the community. So they're there to help us talk about what Extension is and to be, you know, a connection point and see what's happening. Um, we have a really great diverse council, folks in farms, right. um, business, teacher, you know, all of it. So we really want to represent the community. So anyway, so I think and, that's... You know, that was a really <laughs> tricky year for them last year. It, yeah, it was. Just, you know, we all had yeah. to switch to... Zoom or virtual. Yeah, well, nobody phones, really yeah. knew what was happening. I mean, mm -hmm. it, was, it was changing it monthly. Right. You know, mm -hmm. trying to get a meeting together and just, how are we going to do it? And right. Can we do this and can we do that? And, you know, and then the extension kind of has some rules that they have to follow. And so, yeah. you know, uh, it, it did make it a little bit tricky, but hopefully we're not on that tight wire anymore. We can actually get a little bit more flexibility. A little bit. We yep. Do. We're, yeah. we're yeah. getting there. We're getting there. You know, we're and one um, last thing, we're starting a program actually tomorrow morning called LeaderCast, which is an internationally broadcast leadership speaker series. Um, again, that was something we had to cancel last year. So we've mm -hmm. been trying to figure out how to do it. We're going to do it virtually, but there's videos to watch. But that the whole theme of it, and it's a leadership development, and that's part of what we do in community development is help grow the next generation of leaders and help build leadership skills so that people are ready to take on roles in nonprofit boards, elected positions, all of that. And the, the theme this year is positive disruption. So it's how to take <laughs> crazy challenges like this past like year <laughs> and try to frame it differently. And, you know, how do we, there's always something, you know, this time it was COVID. There's mm -hmm. always going to be something that's disrupting how we do our business or work. And so um, this theory, series is to help us think through how to lead through times of change. So. It's an interesting time, but it's getting somewhat back to more normal. So hopefully we can continue to move in the right direction. Right. Well, Sarah, we always thank you for coming in and getting us up to date on what our extension is doing or any of the other extension members down there. And right. we really uh, hope people do use the extension. Remember, a lot of the services, most of their services are actually free. you got to like the price. Yeah. Right? And nothing else. Don't forget about the farmer's market and you want to get in touch with them. You want to get in touch with Sarah and them on, this, on the community garden. You can contact them or you can contact Charlie directly. But mm -hmm. if you can't get a hold of Charlie, call 729-3196. Or if you have any questions about any of these things that we've talked about, you just don't know where to find it. Or maybe you're looking on their website and you can't find something. Simply Mm -hmm. Call them up and say, you know, I'm on your website, but I can't find that series you guys were talking about over at ms and They'll help you guide you to the right place. Yep. Give us a call. It's easy. It's Thanks, really Stan. Easy. We appreciate Thank being you, here. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that. Sarah Massagill, right here on KSMO Radio 1340. We have uh, coming up for you our Bass Pro Outdoor program. And then we have uh, Tegan from the Salem Memorial District Hospital in. We're going to talk about the health fair. It's all coming your way shortly right here on KSMO Radio. But right now, the Bass Pro Outdoor program.